Our next question is a very broad question, but an important one. What do you think is the single biggest infrastructure challenge facing the city, and how would you address it? Matt Wilshire. Yeah, I think the sidewalks are the single biggest challenge right now. Uh, I've met with the head of NDOT who said that we have over 4,000 miles of infrastructure of sidewalks that we need to build, and it's really expensive. Uh, I think that there are, none of these things is, is its own piece. Uh, as mayor, you don't have the luxury of just picking one item. So there are things that we have to do. But sidewalks are absolutely a challenge for our city and how we get around a city, because it's related to everything else that we're talking about. It's how do you get to school? How do kids get to school in a safe manner? How do you get to transit alternatives? How can small businesses benefit from folks in their communities getting there without excess parking? Um, and so we need to make sure that we have a great network of sidewalks uh, to get around the county and so that folks can move around their neighborhoods. It's also important to health. Uh, when folks can get out and walk more easily, we're going to have a healthier community. And so I think there are a variety of things we need to do. Let me commend the work that the water department is doing, separating our stormwater and our sewer. There's more work that needs to be done there. They're doing a great job. I think we need to make transit investments, and I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to talk about that. But if there's one thing that I can do as mayor, it's making sure that everyone has sidewalks so that they can move around their community. And it doesn't mean on every single street. Certainly in low-density neighborhoods, there are going to be fewer sidewalks. But in places where we're connecting kids to schools and folks in neighborhoods to small businesses, we need to make sure that they can get there. Sharon Hurt. The biggest thing for me is our sewage and our water system. You know, we have homes that have been built in single parcels, and now we're putting four, five, six, seven houses on those parcels, and you've got twice, ten times as much usage. I'm afraid that our piping system, especially with it being a hundred plus years old, and all of them leading over to Vanderbilt, that we are going to blow up in our system. And I'm very concerned about that, and I think we need to do an overhaul as the EPA has already uh, slated us and declared and decreed for us to do is get our water system and our storm water systems together. We have too, absolutely too much flooding in our system. And I think we need to address that immediately. And that would be what it is that I would do. I wanna go back to that last question because as mayor, one thing I would definitely do is make sure that the COB and the police are working together. The COB has already given the, the police 22 complaints and policies that they have effected. And I think that that is really important in order for us to address those issues that we've had. They've had over 200 complaints from our community and that builds the trust with the police and the community. Thank you very much. Jim Gingrich? So David, I'm gonna ask answer your question, uh, but it's gonna be at the end because this is such a long list. <laughs> you know, when you grow and you don't do the things that you need to do, when you grow, you have a long list. It, it's it's water, it's sewer, it's storm water, it's, it's the transportation system, it's sidewalks, it's, you know, we're out of landfill capacity, so we have a major waste management issue. Green space. We have talked about this forever. What I hear from people time and again is that development is going in, but where is the infrastructure plan that is going to go with that development? Why does the infrastructure always follow the growth as opposed to having leaders in place that actually are capable of thinking ahead and willing to make the investments as opposed to kicking the can time and time again. Now what I will tell you in terms of the major priority that I hear every time I knock on the door is with all I'm paying in taxes, why can't you keep my roads in good condition? Particularly in neighborhoods that have been ignored for such a long time. Why am I hitting potholes? Do you know how many times my personal windshield is broken this year by a stone being thrown out of, out, of a, out of a pothole? Three times. I can't tell you how many folks have told me about tires blowing out. If we can't do that, we can't do everything Thank you very else. Much. Vivian Wilhoit? Jim Gingrich, you took my answer. <laughs> <laughs> so 
he's right. You drove over here today, and guess what? You hit a pothole. I guarantee you. Tell me one of you who did not. Or you were riding along a road that needs to... You were in your own neighborhood. That's why we have to have economic parity. <laughs> okay? That's why we got to have economic parity right there. But my point is, that's correct. I mean, we do have a lot of things that we want to have as our priority. You know, I sit here and think about one of the priorities. I don't want to see Bordeaux landfill to be, to be expanded. That's an infrastructure in of itself, an environmental injustice for it to be expanded without having people at the table. But going back to the streets, it is important that we have our roads paved, not only on the highways, but in our communities. I mean, our cars, when we seek options to make sure that we can, you know, have mass transit, take the bus or what have you, but we don't want the bus driver to hit a pothole and everybody on his passenger, uh, all the passengers on the bus could get hurt or the, a tire blow out. Or you have to maintain your car. These sound like simple things, but you know what? They are simple, but they mean a lot to us. So I do believe getting the roads paved, getting that pothole that I hit every day paved. Because you, if you try to sue Metro, you're not going to win. <laughs> Thank you. Jeff Yarbrough. So I think you're seeing a theme here, and I think it makes sense. I think everybody in the, in the city understands that growth is going like that, but the infrastructure and services are currently slated to catch up with that growth in about 75 years, like after we're long gone, and that is insufficient, and the next mayor has to be a leader in moving that forward in, in terms of you know setting priorities and getting the work done. I agree with Vivian and Jim that probably the thing I hear the most about out there in the world is roads. Uh, and it should be possible to drive to work or to drop your kids off at school without using a GPS every single time, morning. It should be able to, you should be able to drive in Nashville without needing a degree in tire maintenance or having to do work on your car all the time. But that is increasingly just the way of life here. Uh, since I've got a little bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and give you my second too, which is uh, it doesn't get as much attention and there's never a groundbreaking for it. But if we don't have the water system and the sewer, stormwater, water system actually working for the city, it's going to be a long, difficult future for, our, for the city that we live in. And that is long, boring work. It happens underground. Like I said, there's no, it is rare that you have a big ceremony when that happens. But when it fails, we all know and we all know quick. And so I think there's a lot of work to do in both of those places and in all the other areas that people discuss. Thank you. Ellis Rowley. Yeah, I think the area that our infrastructure is most failing in is our city's balance sheet. Right now, the line item that we spend the second most dollars on after school is our city's debt. And that's debt created by a lot of folks on the stage over the last 15 years, spending consistently more money than we've taken in. So it means that we've been sold a story that growth will pay for growth, but the reality is that it's not. So if I had to choose a sort of a utility separate from the dollars that we're going to spend on that, it would be in addition to roads, our electricity grid. Our seniors who are at home alone or who are d at reliant on different types of medical devices really struggle when we have three days without power in a summer storm. So we've got to get serious first about paying attention to the operations of our city, uh, and that starts with paying attention to our debt. So one question frequently comes up with that, how do you match the cost of growth at the site of growth? And this takes having a perspective that I alone on the state have from working at an executive level with the state and the federal government. In 2006, the County Powers Act stopped our county's ability to capture the cost of growth at the site of growth. We have the ability to work with regional mayors who are also experiencing this same challenge and to reverse this nearly two decades law and to help us in our city pay for growth at the site of growth. Thank you. Freddie O'Connell. It's David. Um, when I was starting to get serious about the campaign, a friend was thinking with me about the future of the city and said, we've been promised all these nice things and we just keep building nicer ways to watch sports. And it feels true, and it's even worse when we build a nice way to watch sports that no one can get to. Uh, last year, uh, we watched Geodis Park open for Nashville SC's home game, and 
If you could take a bus on a weekday, you couldn't take it home. On the weekends, even on game days, we had not figured out how to run our transit system there. Uh, we had not paved sidewalks into the surrounding uh, communities to allow our locals who love Nashville SC best uh, to be able to get easily to the soccer stadium. Uh, this was for a new asset that we knew was coming three years earlier. Um, we just reorganized a big part of our government as the what used to be the Public Works Department in Metro is now a mouthful. It's the Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure, and that speaks to the crisis. We are fortunately in a position where we're starting to think more seriously about state of good repair, about sidewalk delivery after a year of tragic pedestrian deaths, uh, about better transit access, and that's going to be the most critical of all. We are the last major American city uh, without a meaningful transit system, and putting all of that together and giving people safer, easier, more convenient ways to move around the city and access the nice things we've built is critically important and be top of my list. Thank you. Heidi Campbell. So the number one infrastructure problem that we deal with is people. Um, the, the growth has outpaced our infrastructure. And this seems like an overwhelming problem, but it isn't. Um, as the mayor of Oak Hill, and I'm the only person here who has actually been a mayor, when I came into office, uh, we had spent down our reserves by half, and I realized that we needed to streamline our operations. I eliminated my own salary. Um, we, we tightened our belts, and we found the resources to make sure that we could actually handle the infrastructure in our city. Um, we have big infrastructure problems in this city. I serve on the Transportation Committee in the State Senate, and we just passed the largest infrastructure bill in the history of our state. We actually have the funds right now to deal with some of the multimodal issues, the sidewalks, um, paving. It's a big paving plan. Um, and we can also look towards, um, you know, other, other funding to actually um, like the fact that we have downtown um, private developers building smart city technology right now that we can expand upon. And that increases efficiency. So we really need to look at increasing efficiency, and it doesn't have to be an either or. We can, in a fiscally responsible way, actually improve our infrastructure problems significantly. All right, we're going to mix things up a little bit now and allow